What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode. This is a video game review episode of a highly, highly sought after and very, very popular game. Um, it's actually number one on the Steam store as the most played game as well as the highest concurrent uh, number of players on Steam store. At the time of this recording, it's over 2 million. So this is, if you've been you know in a closet somewhere in a dungeon wherever you may have been hiding if you're not familiar with the video game world and you haven't seen this you're missing out power world by pocket pair power world is an amazing game it uh, let's just start off there it's an amazing freaking game it's awesome uh, there is not too many negative things i had to say about this but if you're not familiar with what power world is or the game itself uh, simply put, kind of the consensus around everything for this one. If you go online and you look at Pal World, you'll see it's a combination of what feels like uh, Pokemon with guns is often how it's referred to. Um, one other one I saw was Rune plus Pokemon, which is also fairly accurate as well. Uh, but Pokemon often gets thrown into the mix for this one because it is pocket monsters of sorts um they don't call them pocket monsters they don't call them monsters they're called pal hence the name pal world uh, but it's a it's an amazing game it's a, a survival strategy builder type tactic game um, you do have to catch like i said these pals which all have different elements you know fire ice water electric uh psychic flying like there, there's just a bunch um, do you think in like the realm of Pokemon though, like that's the best way to kind of understand in the most simplistic terminology and explanation that there is, even though it's, it's a lot more in depth. Um, but again, Pokemon with guns, it's the probably one of the number one things you'll see, especially if you Google Pokemon with gun, you're going to get Power World. Um, but this game is, is phenomenal. Love it. Again, there are very, very, very few negative things i had to say the only like real negative thing to say I'll, I'll sprinkle throughout this entire episode and it should be a fairly quick episode because it is a game review about a game this game did come out on the 19th of january um right now at the time of this recording you can get it on xbox and pc uh xbox you can get either by purchasing or uh doing game pass or you can get on steam um again on a computer with that said, Xbox does seem to be um, at least one version behind. So if you are playing on Xbox, but you're maybe seeing a lot of streamers or a lot of content creators uh, posting videos and you may not be able to do something or you're having a technical issue that they're not having, it's likely because you're one or more versions behind. I, the Pocket Pair is working on all that. Uh, so that should be fixed fairly soon i think is what they said um so steam is their currently is their primary source for up-to-date versions of power world and again th this game is it's just a lot of fun um, i've been playing it for about a week now since this recording and i i can tell you i have lost lost many of hours into this game I have lost myself so much and it's honestly a bit ridiculous to to be honest and that's just that's simply put because this game gives you so much to do and you can play on you play on custom servers um, or private servers even and this is kind of where the the interesting part of all this comes from and if you're used to like maybe rust or uh arc um, this game also has been compared to arc as well um arc with pokemon i think is one of the the things i've read but anyways enough with the comparison this game you have to you don't have you have to build a base and you don't have to build it in the traditional sense of like oh you need a house you need a home to sleep in or to uh you know call call home i guess i don't know what i'm trying to explain there you don't need a, a home base you just need a base that your pals 
can do jobs and and yes one of the twisted versions of this that you'll see all over is uh you're capturing these things and you put them to work against their will <laughs> so let's just go with that let's say what it is um but they you, you have to feed them of course and you have to give them a bed or you should let me refer you should give them a bed or else they go insane uh, but there's things like a spa that you have to give them so where they can uh, not go completely insane. They need a bed so where they don't go insane and also they can rest. They need to have a food storage place where they can get food anytime that you have to also keep up to date with like filling it with food because they will eat through all of it. Some eat significantly more. Some eat barely anything. Um, each creature has special abilities, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, but you need all these things inside of your base. Um, and you also need like a fire so where you can cook said food or make food more uh, filling for them. And there's so much you can do, but at the same time, you have like a lumber mill, you have, or a lumber farm, a stone garden, I think is what they called it. Uh, I, stone garden is the best way. But basically those two, they go and chop down trees so where you have lumber and then they, um, go and mine the stone so where you have stone uh, which is good early on but very very quickly you realize you need something called ore and that early on is kind of a pain in the butt to get and there's tons of strategies out there uh, there's tons of videos to actually show you where you should set up bases and starting off you get the ability to set up one base which you have to level up and build certain items in your base to then upgrade your home system to like say level two three four five six seven once you get to i believe it's five maybe five or seven it's an odd number um you get the ability to have two home bases so and these are also travel waypoints so you put one at the beginning you put another one anywhere you want and basically the strategy that is highly recommend i i recommend even um, i do this with myself is there are these resources that you need, like I said, or which are so crucial because there are items you need to craft and they items and buildings and all this stuff that you need to craft and they take uh, refined ore. And in order to get that, you have to have ore, which means you have to mine it. And there are spots in the world where there are just more ore resources or uh, veins or veins where you can go and mine. So you can either go do it yourself or bring a pal with you that has a mining capability throw it but this is where your base comes in handy you can drop down a base node there and let them harvest all these ore and the ore does uh uh come back there's the word i was looking for it does just come back so that while that ore does get depleted you give it a little bit it will respawn and they can go back at it again uh, which means you need to smelt it down and make refined ore so that's like the most crucial element you will need inside the game so i do highly recommend once you get your second base unlocked uh, near like the middle of the map there is a huge area where there's just ore and just drop a base down and go uh, but again these are all either on these are all on custom servers either private or public servers public can be like multiplayer or not uh, but my one of my favorite features, and I, I think it kind of goes without saying because a lot of people absolutely love this aspect, but it's also one of those like that gets made fun of a lot, which is whatever. Fuck those people. Uh, but what's really cool about it is when you set up your own server, again, you can make it public so where everybody can hop onto it willy nilly. You can create a private one and have multiplayer allowed where other people can come join your world with an invite code or you can make it private solo which is what mine is because to get the best experience out of this game personally i like to see how the game handles just like understanding the schematics and how everything works and how the controls work how the functions work how it just all plays out um but inside the settings you get the capabilities of having like turning on settings that can help you or hinder you and these settings have a wide range of uh, things you can change from like 
how much damage you take versus how much damage you give, whether you take more damage from pals or less damage, whether you take more damage from um, player base or non-player base, uh, how often resources respawn, how much resources spawn, how much you harvest when going after that resource, whether it's pickaxe or a uh, regular axe to chop wood or mine, whatever vein you find. So there's so many things on there, even like how long it takes to incubate an egg, how fulfilling food is, or how likely your your pals are to starve or not starve or go insane or not go insane. Like you can change, almost, I honestly would say about 70, 80% of the way the game plays is through your settings and you can manipulate all that to your play style. So if you want things to be a little more difficult, jack all the settings to the point where it is very difficult. You want just like an easy run to kind of learn how to play the game and understand it and have just fun, casual, jack all the settings down so it's a lot easier for you. There's medians too. You can manipulate everything. And that is is a feature that honestly until this game came out, I would say was dead. You didn't see games with this capability uh, not to this extent anyways, most games, you know, you can change the level of difficulty, whether easy, medium, or hard, or insane, or wherever like above insane was, epic, I believe was one of them. But that was like the extent of honestly 98, 98, 99% of all games out there. Very, very seldomly do we find games like this where you can manipulate the catch rate, the fail rate your resources, how much they spawn, respawn, how much they drop when you pick them up or when you um, harvest them. There are very few games out there that allow you to manipulate on such a micro level like that to enjoy the game as you see fit, which honestly, I would rank up as the one of the biggest reasons why this game is so damn successful right now. It hasn't even hit PlayStation yet. It likely won't hit the Nintendo Switch because of the Pokemon comparison. Um, and there's a lot of articles out there. You'll see that Pokemon is suing them. Eh. All the articles I have found, this is kind of a side note slash caveat to all this. All the articles I have found and I have researched on this is for the, with the exception of one article that actually came from Pokemon company themselves. All the articles say is Pokemon is suing uh, Power World. And if you go on to actually read the article, they're talking about a specific modders who came out and dropped mods so where your character gets converted into look like ash ketchup you have misty and brock in there you have team rocket and all the pals get converted to pokemon so you see like pikachu and volpix and eevee and dragonite and mewtwo you see all the all the pokemon on there that's the primary person that went after and got in a lot of trouble that way uh the recent report that came out of pokemon co is they are looking into Power World and seeing if there is in any legal standing for them to go after. However, if you go back even further or you just can do your research on this type of stuff, Pocket Pair themselves have been building this for years and they have been taking every legal means to ensure that they basically are not able to be sued by Pokemon, Game Freak, Niantic, whoever. Um, studio they want uh, wants to go after them for being a, a ripoff or a clone so to speak and they've done their due diligence so again based off the research i've done in that one article they're not suing they are simply looking into it which could possibly result in a negative outcome for pocket pair who's the studio behind pal world but i don't see anything coming of it that's again just my personal opinion based upon the research and the articles and everything I'm seeing and the uh, information pocket Paris came out. But with that put aside, because that's the one, the first thing I, I hear every time I've been talking about power world or anybody ask if I'm playing this or uh, what do I think about it is, well, you know, they're getting sued by poke. No, no, do your fucking research. Stop reading the headlines. Headlines don't mean shit. Anyways, back to the game. This game is, is so interesting in of itself and the fact that there is such a wide variety of pals to capture twisted version um 
there are AI players in the game that will attack you and they try to, they don't try, they do capture pals, they attack pals. Um, but these AI players can also be captured. And not only can those AI players be captured, the merchants that you'll run into can also be captured. And that's kind of one of the cool, or is one of the cool features of the game. And an interesting aspect of it is say you, you're like me, I, I did it. Say you find a merchant and by the way, there's merchants for like items and then there's black market merchants and then there's pal merchants, um, black market and pals are virtually the same with the exception of black market is like you more epic slash rare, rare epic versions of pals. Um, and then the pal merchant is, you know, there's random pals that you can buy from him. Uh, you can also sell your pals as well. And we'll get to one of the more twisted side of this in a second. But you can capture those merchants, put them in your base. And not only will they work for you, like harvesting wood and ore, or sorry, uh, stone, or uh, help with the, the farm or the guarding of it. They also keep their ability to be merchants, so you can constantly sell stuff to them. And you can also buy stuff to them from them. So I I would recommend finding a a PAL merchant, ideally a black merchant one or black market one if you can. Otherwise, just a regular PAL merchant plus regular merchants where you can sell for gold and sell for essence that you can then use to buy pals or items that you need throughout the game as you need it which uh, again just awesome so you don't have to hunt them down you can just have them in your base um so funny one of the more twisted and fucked up things about this and i it's one of those, like you gotta understand when i say i love it it's just i love the concept behind all this and it's funny from a dark twisted version uh aspect of it but you do have to or you don't have to i guess you're given the option to butcher your pals and harvest for meat which you can then cook into meals <laughs> again not like your typical haha -ha funny but from a gamer perspective that's kind of funny because other games have done that um, and they even censor it out so like you get a pixelized uh, cover over you butchering, say, the lamb that you can you can get or the chicken that you can capture. There's also other ones as well. So a little mess up. Uh, you can also breed these pals, which require cake, which is kind of funny. That's cake. Um, then there's also. Uh, what's what's the. I forget what it's called, but there is a ranch pin, so to speak. It looks like a corral pin, actually. But anyways, it's an open pin where you can send pals to go in there and they can um, like give you milk if you capture the cow looking pal, eggs if you get if you throw the chicken guy in there, um, or you can get a couple that give you like wool and cotton, which you need to craft as well. Um, you can also get ones that dig and they kind of look like Eevee, not gonna lie, but they dig up the dirt and that is um, Vixie, I think is her name. If you can find her, um, amazing pal to have there, especially early on because you drop the corral and get like one or two of them in there and they will just dig up um, arrows for your bow. They'll dig up uh, common spears, which is your pokeball so to speak um and they'll dig up wool as well so you like three things you you need early on and the spheres are very very crucial just in and of itself because you don't have to craft them and similar to like other games where you have your your pickaxe your axe your bow or gun even your shield your armor your uh, helmet so to speak it all has to be repaired because the more you use it the more it deteriorates which means you get less resources or none at all and you do less damage um speaking of guns <laughs> each or not each majority of pals have 
have either special abilities or have special uh, base abilities, uh, such as the digging for hidden treasure or giving you eggs or giving you milk or that type of stuff, giving you items. Uh, the special abilities, though, are fucking hilarious. It can range from like elemental abilities like a giant fireball or ice ball. Um, there's one called Dream Eater or Dream Trip, I think it's. I get, I'm going to confuse the name with Pokemon, so I, I believe it's Dream Trip, but a psychic attack. Um, but then there's also like a little chipmunk like dude or squirrel like dude that can have a submachine gun. There is a penguin that you can shove into a rocket launcher and shoot the penguin. And it does, oh, it does so much damage. Now, granted, that's a one and done type thing, meaning the penguin faints, so you do have to re uh, let them recover in the pal box. Again, it takes about 10 minutes. Um, but it, there's also a monkey has an assault rifle. There's sh just weird shit. And it's so funny because when Pocket Pair it was originally asked, like, why did you introduce guns? They gave one of... Uh, I'm glad it was honest, but they gave one of the most memorable lines ever, memorable responses of why something's inside of a game out there today. And uh, when asked, why did you include guns? Uh, oh, well, because Americans like to shoot stuff and America's a, a big market. Awesome. And not, not completely wrong, but, you know, I love the reason why I'm behind this. Uh, but with that said, the only, the only few negative things I have to say about this is, and this is kind of a generic one, um, and it's just simply, you have to know this going into the game, because there's a lot of people I've, I've ran across, and a lot of people I watch that kind of piss and moan about this. This game is a grind, it is a survival, it is a building game, which means... It's not fast paced by any means like a Call of Duty or Fortnite or Apex. It is it is a very slow, methodical, tactical game that you, you need to build and you need to craft and you need to harvest and you need to do all this stuff that doesn't just happen instantaneously. It does take time. You have day and night time. Your day can go as fast or as slow as you want. Same with night. So there's a lot of elements to this. I see a lot of people like, oh, well, this is the only takeaway. I don't think it's ne a negative aspect of it, but it's an aspect that people do need to understand. The only real issue like I ran into the week I've been playing this now is whatever happened on uh, two days ago of this recording, um, I was roaming the world and I got into a huge battle with AI players who kind of like got me um, and I was about to die. Speaking of which, again, settings, you can change stuff for when you die. It, like if you lose anything, if thing takes damage, like your weapons, or if you just like die and can respond, which is how I have mine. I just die and respond. I don't have it where I lose anything. Piss them at me all you want. Call me names i don't care i don't like losing my shit that i have spent hours on potentially to harvest and gather and just accidentally die um but side note or side note aside i ran into i i call it a bug and i say that because these ai npcs there we go came over and they were shooting me shooting me and i ran away i got my flying mount which again if First thing you should work really hard towards is cat, capture a flying pal and uh, craft a flying mount so where you can fly. It's a lot easier to travel. But anyways, I flew away and left them behind in the dust. And I got to my base and the game bugged out. So now all my pals at all my bases are acting like there is uh, players to attack or NPCs to attack. And there's none. So that's the only bug like I've ran into. And even when... I've shut the game off and restart it. It's still there. The only way I've right now, the only way I figure out how to solve it is just start a brand new server. Um, because even if you put different pals in your base, it still reacts the same way. Um, so 
It's the only one I've actually report bugged. The other, the other negative thing would honestly just be the the. I don't know if I want to consider it negative because I don't think it is, but it's often often complained about, and that is again the the way the materials work and the fact that so many buildings and craftable items require an astronomical amount of ore specifically ore or refined ore um and then as you get it's like once you hit level i want to say it was like level eight you had to start finding ore um and i'm at level 43 i think i just got done playing um like level 43 i believe and everything takes ore and then on top of that uh, your spears take ore as well, uh, take refined ore. So now you have to craft that, which means you have to have a pal over there smelting it down because you can't do it yourself. Um, you have to build a furnace, but guess what? That also requires ore or refined ore. So that's like, it's tedious and there's one. Oh, what am I trying to craft? Oh, man. Oh, I'm trying to craft a sphere assembly line. So where I don't have to craft the spheres anymore, my pals can. I give them jobs without pay and just feed them. Catch my drift. But anyways, it calls for a hundred refined ore along with other materials. And one, to smelt the ore down is already painstakingly slow. And that's even with having a pal that's level three and four. And the fact that you need a hundred of them, uh, you need ore for... You need ore to repair like your weapons, uh, which is already kind of a pain in the butt. So you're using ore and refined, or sorry, you need refined ore to repair. Uh, so you already need this material religiously through the game. And unless you build a base on a cluster of ore veins, like you're going to leave base to go go harvest them and you're going to get weighted down or you have to be very careful of your weight which if you're leveling up i highly recommend spending a lot of your craft or a lot of, lot of your points talent points on weight on your backpacks so where you can carry more your attack and your health uh, that's what i've gone with i've only died like twice and that's because i forgot to heal or i forgot to pay attention so that was a user error not a game error um, and all my pals are like 38 and above. Similar to Pokemon, the higher they are, the better, but if they're a lot higher than you, then you know you kind of have an issue and they don't behave. Other than that, I mean, it's just, it's tedious, and if you don't, if you don't build that base around a cluster of ore, you are going to it's going to take a very long time. Uh, I, I do recommend, so again, get the fly mount capability and fly around and you'll see little clusters of NPC and you'll want to either go attack them or be sly, like I, I tried to be in some tribe, and I will go into their camp because they'll have a cage there where they have a pal locked up and quickly go unlock it before they attack you or before they can kill you. And you get that pal because you rescued the pal. Um, but this is a great way to to get harder to find pals early on. Uh, and it's also just a great way to find pals who have higher working abilities and uh, working talent abilities. And just like it's, the, in my opinion, the best way. Uh, Early on, anyways, there are times where like I ran into a camp and they're all, you know, forty five. I'm like, well, fuck, I'm I'm dead. Um, once you're able to get any type of like legitimate weapon, be a gun, whether pistol or assault rifle, SMG, um, <laughs> rocket launcher, craft it, craft a lot of ammo. Unless you get really lucky like me, you just find ammo, you know. You don't need crafted just like arrows um 
once you're able to get a bow, do get a bow and um, again throw the Vixie pal into the pin, the crowl pin, so where she can dig up arrows and she'll just dig up tons of them. Like I have over four thousand arrows right now just because she's been doing that for almost a week now, just digging up, and it saves me a lot of material, even though I think it's just wood and rope. So, but it's definitely an amazing game to check out i highly recommend it and here's the best bloody part because when video games come out the number one question that's often often asked and criticized to hell and back is the production of the game and the value of the game versus its price tag the average game today is 70 dollars or more and that is for like the base level game what I mean by base level is majority of games have multiple tiers, um, whether you have like base and legendary or base and deluxe or base deluxe and legendary. Uh, there's typically two versions of the game. Um, one that is literally like, here's the bloody game. And the other one will be like, here's the game with maybe future DLCs or with additional items that you get unlocked and you get more capabilities right up the front. Um, this, there's just the base game. And it's only thirty dollars. Um, if you were lucky from January nineteenth to the twenty fifth of December, and yes, I understand this comes out a week after the twenty fifth, and I get that people are like, "Well, man, you guys should know." Listen, okay, we'll get to it. The first week it was out, it was twenty nine ninety nine. However. It was on sale on Steam. Again, one of the two places you can find it. It was on sale at Steam for, I believe it was like $24 or $25. It's only like five, six dollars off, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it also boosted their sales and their user and their concurrent player account religiously. Just it's it's astronomical that they crossed over two million players and um, I believe it's even concurrent now let me double check that one second yeah that's right so pal world has surpassed two million concurrent players and that's the second game ever to pass two million uh and that's ridiculous get for thirty dollars this game is is amazing like even if it was seventy dollars the game is so fucking amazing it's so much fun it's very enjoyable uh they've already laid out their roadmap for the upcoming not DLC season, I guess would be the best way to put it, what they're going to do here real real soon. Um, but they're going to include things like cross play between Steam and Xbox. Um, they're going to make sure Xbox stays up to date with versions. They're going to have more pals, uh, raids and dungeons, which you already kind of have raids and dungeons right now. There's not a whole lot of them. And they're going to uh, emphasize on that so much more. And they're going to improve upon it. You're going to get more items, more capabilities, and like it just it sounds amazing. And they are working their asses off. So Pocket Pair, like amazing dev, amazing studio, like get after it, check them out, play it. Highly recommend it. Is this game though for children? Eh. <laughs> it depends on your parenting style. Would I let my kids play this? Yeah. Because again, it's it's all fiction, and we let our kids know, you know, this is all fake. Don't take anything into it. However, it does take a little bit more skill to do. But other than the guns, and depending upon your stance on that as a whole, it will kind of dictate whether or not you think it's a game for them. But uh, you do you do have to make them work. And one of the best Steam reviews I've seen time and time over is this is the best quote amazon warehouse simulator end quote which is hilarious because that's basically what you're doing is you're getting all these pals and you're putting them to work and it's not the greatest condition but it's hilarious and each one does something different there's tons of different pals and again honestly if you're into like rune and rust and arc or you're a you like the concept of Pokemon, but you felt like it's kind of been stale. This gives a lot of improvement. Um, the people who tend to hate this game the most are hardcore uh, Pokemon fanatics. 
and I, I do mean that to my core. Like, you can go on, there's just people who will shit on this game, calling it a ripoff of Pokemon. Well, yes, some of them look similar. It's a completely different game in of itself. Um, yes, there's balls you can use, or spheres you can use to capture. Cool, there's pals, cool. But there's so much more. Um, Pokemon's very much been cookie cutter, copy and paste type thing for decades now with minimum improvement and I love Pokemon I grew up with Pokemon and I just it's amazing like I love Pokemon I have all their games I think they're great I think Power World though being drastically different is also a better game because it offers more and maybe this will light a fire underneath Pokemon Co and Game Freak to create a more diverse and more a true open world concept um, for for Pokemon because they have the capabilities and I think it would be amazing. So competition is never a bad thing. I think this is what it's going to do. And especially with everyone comparing Power World specifically to Pokemon, it's going to kind of drive that comparison. Uh, but again, for $30, you can't beat it. It's an amazing game. Lots of stuff to do. Uh, tons of things you can do both as as a solo player by yourself or get a team of four together and build an epic base and just do a bunch of stuff together um, and best part about those servers again if it's a public one where everyone can join and eh, i've joined a couple public ones i'm not a big fan of them because there are people that just go around and fuck your base up just because so not my favorite uh private servers with multiplayer that's also really fun um, again, you can control how many players are in there up to 32, four per team, um, or no more than four on a team. And again, you can attack each other. Just be aware of that. Uh, or you can just do a private server that has just the four of you guys or you and your friends on it and, uh, build and work together to defeat bosses, defeat stronger pals and take turns capturing and finding all of it. So, but it's an amazing game. I definitely recommend it. This is probably one of the very few games I would give a damn near perfect score with. Um, but because there's still some things to improve and there is that minor glitch I, I'm still running into right now. I had to start a new server over in order to fix it. Um, again, that's merely like my negativity, negative uh, remark on this one. But either which way. It's a minor inconvenience for now. Once the game gets updated or a patch, it'll be fixed. So, but that's all I got for you. Uh, definitely recommend Power World again. We're not sponsored or partnered with them, unless Pocket Pair. Hey, it is up. Um, this is just a game review. Again, the, the game reviews are opinion of mine, being Sig, um, as it's my my opinion on this game. There are. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there that say this game's an atrocity. There's going to be people who give it higher praise and say that's wrong. My opinion. Like it, hate it. Feel free to comment, let us know. And feel free to challenge. It's fine. If you want to play Power World, hit us up anywhere on social media at 2 guys one gamepad And it's going to be primarily myself, as Roggle does not have this game. He doesn't have the ability to have this game yet. So if you want to play Power World, let me know in the comments. Hit me, hit us up on social media, or come join us on a live, or come join me on a live stream when I play Power World at my Cybermark Sig uh, so, uh, handle, which is on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and Kick. Because uh, I will, I'm going to start live streaming this the Monday before this is released. So I believe that's the 20, 29th of January. But again, this comes out on like the 31st. Uh, other than that, go check us out on social media. There is, of course, always a video edition of our podcast, which can only be found in one location right now, and that is over on Patreon. Patreon offers a ton of extra uh, perks and benefits to subscribing for only $3 a month. And for those people who's like, oh, I don't want to subscribe, it's, it's support. And it, again, we don't ask any, or we don't tell people they have to. It's just an option as all that does is come back and help support the brand and help allow us to grow at a faster rate and get things 
that we may, we had to kind of wait on because uh, again it's just Roggle and I myself and those of you that don't know it's literally the two main crew uh, but go check out Patreon you do get a seven day free pass when you sign up and you can come check out you can just watch all of season three right now uh, if you can get through all eight or nine episodes or more depending upon when you're listening to this uh, and then go check us out on social media Facebook Instagram uh, YouTube, TikTok. There we go. Come join us over on Discord and talk about the episodes. Have ideas. Come join us on Game Night via Discord every Thursday night. Rog and I hop on, mostly Call of Duty, and we play for hours on end. And everyone is welcome to join us. So, without further ado, thanks so much for tuning in and listening to this episode about the game review for Power World by Pocket Pair. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and follow the channel so where you can stay up to date and then if you want more again join us on discord or social media at two guys one gamepad find us over on youtube as well other than that we'll see you on the next episode till then everyone take care